Hi everyone. This video is an introduction to the process of mitosis. The video will provide some background information and explain how mitosis works, and then in class we'll review the process and add a few more details. Mitosis is a type of cell division, so to start, let's take a look at why cells need to divide. As you may remember from the very beginning of the school year when we learned what defines life, all living things are made of one or more cells. So if we were to take a very close look at you, a large multicellular organism, and zoom way in, we would find that you are made of many trillions of individual cells. And all of these cells came from other cells. So if we rewind, go back in time to the very first moment that you were genetically you, you were just one cell. And that one cell became two cells, those two cells became four cells, and so on and so forth until you became the many trillions of cells that you are today. How did they do this? Through cell division. In cell division, one cell divides into two or more cells. The basic way that it happens is that a cell copies all of its DNA and then pulls apart those copies to create cells that are more or less similar to the original cell. But how similar the resulting cells are to the original cell depends on what kind of cell division is occurring. But in every case, cells divide to make more cells. And this can be for many purposes, such as reproduction, growing, or healing. There are several types of cell division, each performed by different types of organisms and for different purposes. Binary fission is a type of cell division used by prokaryotes, such as bacteria, for asexual reproduction. Because prokaryotic cells are small, simple cells with just one chromosome, this is a relatively simple process, and you do not need to know how it works for this class. The other two cell division processes occur in eukaryotes, so they're a bit more complicated, simply because eukaryotes are larger, more complex cells with multiple chromosomes. Mitosis is used by eukaryotic organisms for a few different purposes. In unicellular organisms that are made of just one cell, it's used for asexual reproduction. In multicellular organisms, such as humans, it's used for growth and tissue repair. Meiosis is a different type of cell division used in eukaryotes for sexual reproduction. This requires very special cells called gametes, which you know as eggs and sperm. And we're going to learn more about meiosis in a few weeks, but today we're going to focus on mitosis. The goal of mitosis is to take one starting cell and create two genetically identical daughter cells. These daughter cells should have the same number of chromosomes as the starting cell. In this diagram, we see one starting cell that has one red chromosome and one blue chromosome. Each of those chromosomes gets copied, and then the copies get pulled apart to create two daughter cells that each have one red chromosome and one blue chromosome, just like the starting cell. This is a really simple cell that only has two chromosomes. In humans, it would be more complicated. The starting cell would have 46 total chromosomes, and then those two daughter cells would each have the same 46 chromosomes. But it's not only the total number of chromosomes that matters. Each daughter cell must get the same combination of chromosomes. So it's really important to divide up the chromosomes so that each daughter cell gets exactly one of every chromosome. This careful division involves several steps, which we're going to go through on the next few slides. The first thing that has to happen is that every chromosome in the cell gets copied. And this is using the process of DNA replication, which we learned about recently. In this process, sister chromatids are created. So we go from one chromatid in an unreplicated chromosome to a replicated chromosome with two sister chromatids that are connected at the centromere. And this process happens before mitosis during the S phase. After S phase, the cell makes other preparations to divide during the G2 phase. When it's ready to start mitosis, the first thing that happens is that the chromosomes condense. In their regular form, chromosomes are long and stringy, which makes it difficult to move them around the cell. So in this process, they coil up into tightly packed, shorter chromosomes. If we have a replicated chromosome like this, when it goes through the condensation process, it will look more like this, a sort of short, fat, fuzzy form sort of scale out a little bit. If we start by looking at the double-stranded piece of DNA, this double helix, we can see it folding up on itself, coiling around these proteins, coiling and folding even more to make this form that we see here, this short, thicker chromosome. And when you see pictures of chromosomes in textbooks or online, they're often shown in this form because this is the only time when we can actually see them under the microscope, when they're in this thicker, condensed form. 
Condensing the chromosomes like this makes it easier to move them around the cell and easier to separate the sister chromatids. One way to think about this is to visualize chromosomes as long pieces of yarn. So in a human cell with 46 chromosomes, that means 46 long pieces of yarn all tangled up together in the nucleus. If you tried to divide these pieces of yarn, it would be very difficult with long stringy pieces everywhere and getting tangled. But if you rolled up each piece of yarn into a compact ball, it would be much easier to move them around in an organized manner. So that's what this condensing process accomplishes. Once the chromosomes are condensed, they're ready to move, but they're still trapped inside the nucleus. So the next thing that happens is the nuclear envelope, that double layer of membrane around the nucleus, temporarily disintegrates. This diagram shows the nuclear envelope here becoming a dashed line as enzymes break apart that membrane to allow the chromosomes to move around within the cell. Once they can do that, the chromosomes will move towards the middle of the cell and they will line up along the center of the cell. In this diagram, you can see these replicated chromosomes, they're condensed in the short form, that are lined up along the middle of the cell. And you can see there are these blue lines here. There's another structure here that's called a spindle. The chromosomes are lined up along this spindle. And the spindle started forming as the nuclear envelope was disintegrating. You can see these blue lines starting to form in the top diagram. That spindle is made of fibers called microtubules that are part of the cytoskeleton. And these microtubule fibers provide tracks for chromosomes to move along. And this is something we've seen before when we were learning about organelles. When objects move from one region of the cell to another, such as a vesicle moving from the ER to the Golgi, they need tracks to move along. And microtubules are those tracks. Once the chromosomes are lined up at the center of the cell along those microtubule tracks, they are ready to separate. The next step is that sister chromatids will separate and move to opposite ends of the cell. This diagram here shows the two sides of each chromosome, the two sister chromatids have separated, and they are going to opposite sides of the cell. These here are moving to the left, and these here are moving to the right. The chromosomes themselves do not have any way of moving, so they need something to pull them. And the way that this works is actually one of the more interesting parts of mitosis. There are special structures called kinetochores that are located at the centromeres of each chromosome, and they contain motor proteins. In this diagram, we're looking at one replicated condensed chromosome that's sitting right on a microtubule fiber, a spindle fiber. You can see the two sister chromatids of the replicated chromosome, and these yellow structures here represent the kinetochores. So there's one kinetochore here and one here. They're not actually this large or bright yellow, but this just shows you where they are. And there's a motor protein inside each of those kinetochores, the same type of motor proteins that pull vesicles around in the cell. Now these motor proteins walk along those spindle fibers. They can walk along the microtubules. And each kinetochore is going to move in an opposite direction, pulled by its motor protein. In this bottom diagram, you can see this kinetochore pulling to the left and this kinetochore pulling to the right, pulled by their motor proteins. And this pulls apart the two sister chromatids. They get separated. And when they become separated, we refer to them as daughter chromosomes. So now we've got one daughter chromosome here and one daughter chromosome here. And the motor proteins will keep walking until they have pulled these daughter chromosomes to opposite ends of the cell. Daughter chromosomes have arrived at opposite ends of the cell. A new nuclear envelope, that double layer of membrane, forms around each set of chromosomes. So it creates two nuclei, one at each end of the cell. In this diagram, you can see a new nuclear envelope forming around each set of chromosomes, the chromosomes that move to the left and the ones that moved to the right. And while this is happening, the chromosomes themselves are also changing. The chromosomes start to unravel or decondense and go back to their long, thin, stringy form. So they go from this short, fat, fuzzy form to the long, stringy form that we saw before. Finally, the rest of the cell also has to split. So it separates into two cells like this, with one nucleus in each cell. And there's an approximately equal division of the membrane, the cytoplasm, and other organelles in the cell, such as the mitochondria, the ER, and the ribosomes. This step has a separate name. This step is called cytokinesis, this separation of everything else. And this is not technically part of mitosis, because mitosis refers only to the separation of the chromosomes and the nuclei. But once this last step, this cytokinesis, is complete, Cell division is done. One more thing to look at is, how does mitosis fit into the cell cycle? We learned about the cell cycle recently, so to do a quick review, new cells would be created right around here, 
and then they'd go into the G1 phase where they would grow, make proteins, and do all their regular cell functions. If a cell is given the go-ahead signal to divide, it will move into the S phase and perform DNA replication to copy all of its chromosomes. When it's done with that, it will proceed on to the G2 phase to make other preparations for cell division, such as making more mitochondria and uh, all the, all the uh, proteins and everything it needs to get ready for cell division. And then finally, it would get to this M phase. And the M phase involves two separate processes. It involves mitosis, which is the division of the chromosomes in the nuclei, and then it involves cytokinesis, the division of the cytoplasm organelles and membranes. And again, cytokinesis does usually overlap with the end of mitosis, but it's not technically part of mitosis. So these two processes are both involved in the M phase when cell division happens. Now, when scientists are focusing on cell division, they often want to know if a cell is in M phase or not. So we have a collective term for all the parts of the cell cycle that are not the M phase. We call that interphase. So interphase includes G1, S, and G2 phases. So when we're talking about mitosis in class, we're going to refer to the M phase and mitosis versus interphase, which is just everything else that's happening during the cell cycle. The last thing you need to know is that scientists have divided the events of mitosis into different phases based on the status and location of the chromosomes, the nuclear envelope, and the spindle. These phases are shown below just to give you a preview, but you will learn more about these phases, what happens during each one, and how to identify them in class. So that's everything you need to know as an introduction to mitosis, and again, we'll learn much more about this in class. Until then, take care of yourself and take care of each other.